Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Miles, I use they them pronouns, and I like to talk about books. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate you. I wanted to address the elephant in the room really quickly. Um, I do currently have a black eye, <laughs> my first black eye ever. Um, I'm doing totally fine. I was in Wisconsin last week, which you'll see in my vlog. I don't know which one's coming up first, but I have some end of year Christmas content. I was in Wisconsin and I slipped and busted my ass and went, slipped on ice and went head first into stairs. Um, so I hit my head on the stairs. So that is why I have a black eye. I'm doing okay. I'm very lucky I don't have a concussion or anything. Um, but I didn't want to let that stop me from filming anything. I'm planning on some really fun holiday content. So today I am doing a little holiday book haul of all of the books that I got for Christmas. And I'm really excited to share them with you. Most of them are used books. And yeah, let's just get into it. I got this um, UK magazine called Hellbor. And this was the Yuletide special. My girlfriend got this for me. And I had actually at the bookstore seen this and written it down as something I really wanted. She didn't even see that and she still bought this for me. So it's right up my alley. Um, it's about like pagan Yule and um, winter rituals and kind of just like a collection of essays about that. Um, so I really enjoyed that. There's this one that's just different megaliths to go see the solstice from in the UK. Um, and just really cool. I really enjoyed reading this. This is one of my last reads of 2022. And I really liked it. Thank you, Kate. My mom got me uh, two of my like dream books. I'm so happy about this. Um, Moominland Midwinter and Moomin Summer Madness. Um, I have both of these books already, but I have the not very attractive um, US editions, but these are absolutely stunning. Um, like, oh my god. So with, I mean, here's this without the dust jacket. Get little Moomin on there. Um, just like, wonderful. You get a fold out map of Moomin Valley in winter. Like, I don't know, if you haven't read the Moomin books before, um, they're by Tove Janssen, who was a lesbian writer and just super, like, wholesome, sweet content. If you haven't read any of the Moomin books before, I would definitely recommend it if you are kind of into this, like, middle grade genre. It's hard to tell, like, who she's writing for, especially in my favorite of the series, Moominland Midwinter. Um, where it kind of goes into themes of like death and seasonal depression and the darker times of the year and really like leans into that. Um, and I think this is a great read for younger readers, but also like, I don't know, I think I'm gonna read this every winter until I die probably. Um, and there's just wonderful illustrations. They have these illustrations in the paperback books that I've read before, but it's just not the same. And at, I noticed this um, at the top of each page is just like a little summary of what's happening on those two pages. Like, are you kidding? That's so cool. So that is Moominland Midwinter. I'm gonna put it back in its dust jacket. And I also have Moomin Summer Madness, which is just a different book in the series that I actually haven't read yet. So I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna probably wait to read it until it gets a bit warmer, but yeah. Thank you, mom, for these. Really, really excited about that. Next, I have Once Upon a High Time, 14 Weedy Fairy Tales, which I have read a couple so far. It's from one of my favorite stores in Asheville, Garden Party, and it is just like, oh my God. So I picked this up in the store and I was just like so struck by how beautiful these illustrations were. And I'll show you some like stunning, like that is so beautiful. 
So these are all fairy tale retellings with weed worked into them somehow, which is really fun and silly. But the main thing that just really sold me about this was the illustrations. They are beautiful. Um, so I've read a few of them so far. I haven't read the whole thing, but really excited about this. And it's just like so beautiful. Also the cover, really excited about this one. It's not on Goodreads though, which is so sad. My mom got me the Beatrix Potter knitting book, which I asked for and I'm very excited about. Um, it is just a giant hardcover with like the sweetest little knitting designs I have ever seen in my life. Like, are you kidding? That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. And they also have um, them adapted to adult sizes. And I, oh, this is, this is one of my favorites. I think I'm gonna make that. The landscape sweater, it's so beautiful. Like seriously, I feel like it's really rare that I feel like a pattern book is worth buying um, because I usually only like a few of the patterns. But this one, like everything in this is wonderful. Just the cutest stuff. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really hoping to make something from this book soon. Like these little owl sweaters. Oh, I just love them. So really excited about this book. Also, sorry if the lighting in this video is kind of weird. I'm like rushing to finish filming this before the sun sets because of course it is only like 4.45 and it's about to get dark. I got a lot of weird niche books, um, specifically from my girlfriend Kate because we can just shop for each other really well. Um, most of the books she got me, I had never heard of. And some of them are definitely a little weird, but very up my alley. So this book is called Holy Cow. Um, and yes, it does have textured udder on the front. And honestly, I don't really know what this is about very much, but I thought it was wonderful. It seems to just be kind of like an ode to cows and like our culture's relations with cows and how cows have been used in advertising like it's just really interesting um and i love cows they're one of my favorite animals so this is wonderful but i'm excited to like flip through this i think it'll be like a really fun like coffee table book as well it's just ridiculous so Thank you for this, Kate. This is probably one of the weirdest picks on this list, and I appreciate that. Okay, this is definitely one of the coolest things I got this year, also from my sweet girlfriend, Kate. This is Edward Gorey's Dracula, a toy theater. I guess this isn't technically a book, but like, she bought it from a bookstore, and I don't know. So it's basically, like, here, I'll show you the back. It's basically like this set um, if you're not aware, uh, Edward Gorey uh, designed the set for a theater production of Dracula in the 70s, and I've been like obsessed with that. I love the illustrations from it. There's an edition published of Dracula with his illustrations, and they're beautiful, um, but Jesus Christ, I wish I could have seen this theater production but now I can like have my own little one at home and like I had no idea that this existed so I it was really cool to open this on Christmas because I was like holy shit like what the fuck is this um so it comes with like all of these little guys to pop out you can see the shadow of my phone I don't like that but um really excited about this definitely gonna be really fun to mess around with for a day um just what a cool unique gift like so perfect for me kate can seriously shop for me like nobody else does these are two books that i bought for myself while i was in wisconsin um and i'm gonna be honest i don't know much about either of them uh saltwater poems and ballads by john massfield maysfield one of those um i just loved this cover and I love the ocean. <laughs> I'm a Florida girl at heart. And I just, I don't know, this seemed really interesting and poems about being a sailor and being away at sea and just like love letters to the sea. And so I picked this up because it was only a couple dollars. 
I got it at this um, coffee shop called The Black Cat that has like a little book section in the back. I also bought Northern Frights, A Supernatural Ecology of the Wisconsin Headwaters. Because uh, if you know me, you know I am Little Miss amateur folklorist and it feels disrespectful to go travel somewhere without buying a dubiously researched book about the folklore and the supernatural encounters in that region. So I had to get this and it was like $3. Um, Wisconsin ghost tales, folk legends, and supernatural happenings. Um, I had a great time up in Wisconsin. I really like Wisconsin and I thought this would be really fun. I can't wait to be out of college for many reasons, but oh my god, I can't wait to have a home and to be able to like actually collect books, like a library of books, because I just want like so many folklore books and I just don't have the room for them, but I decided to make a little exception for that. I also just realized that my fan has been on this whole time, so I am so sorry. I hope that isn't messing with the audio at all, but I'm already far enough into this video where I don't want to change that, so I'm sorry. Next, uh, another gift from my mom is Kissing the Witch by Emma Donahue. I have already read this book and I gave it four stars. I read it like last winter in just one day, uh, laid in bed all day on a snowy day and it was just the perfect setting um, there. Feminist fairy tale retellings. I think this came out around the 90s. Um, so it's kind of, I hate to say it, but like it came out before that kind of became oversaturated, which I feel like that market is a little oversaturated now and um, sometimes it's just a little too girl boss for my taste. Um, but Emma Donahue wrote Room, which is crazy because these feel like they have nothing in common and they don't, but she's a lesbian author and wrote this and it has a lot of sapphic undertones to it. It did used to be a library book, so that's why it's all shiny. I'm hoping to take that off soon to um, take off the library wrap but I just love I read this book last year and I just loved the way it was like typeset like how narrow it was that's a weird thing to really be into I guess but I just I don't know I really liked it and I did really like the book as well next another niche pick from the girlfriend Leaf the Lucky by Ingrid and Edgar Perrin Dulaire I don't know if I pronounced that properly but this is a kid's book that she said she had when she was a child and you can see like who read this before me which is really sweet um and I don't know I think it's Nordic um Norwegian I don't know this is a very old children's book but Kate recommended it to me and you know why not the illustrations are really cool too this little guy and look at those little seals so cute excited to check this out next up is something that I wanted really really bad and I'm really excited about um, this magazine from the early 1900s called the craftsman um, this is an edition from April 1908 Kate bought this copy for me after I told her that I really wanted a copy of one of these magazines um, what a beautiful cover here. Um, also, yeah, there is a bag because this guy is really old. This is an edition from 1908 of April, which is so cool. Here it is up close. Um, it's very worn and uh, it's just beautiful though. The first page is uh, an advertisement for Tiffany & Co, which is so cool. Like, I don't know. I love this cover. It's so beautiful. This woman weaving with a field of sheep, which is just my dream. Um, and this actually doesn't have this printed on the cover, but um, what drew me to this magazine, not the only thing, but something that drew me to this magazine so heavily was a quote from Chaucer that they feature on a lot of their covers, I think starting around like 1910. And it's, um, the life so short, the craft so long to learn. And it's spelled in that like old middle English way. I'm putting this back in here. Um, and I don't know, that quote, 
really resonated with me. I didn't know it was a Chaucer quote at first. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with that. Um, absolutely obsessed with that. Like need that like tattooed on my body. And then I Googled it. Cause I was like, I feel like this is a Chaucer quote or something like, like that. Um, and it was, and I, took a Chaucer class my first year of college and honestly really, really enjoyed it. And it like really influenced my choice to become an English major. So I definitely, Chaucer holds a little spot in my heart. And honestly, ever since I saw that magazine, I've been wanting to get that quote tattooed. So long story short, really cool magazine. Thank you, Kate. Next, I have a, another book from my mom. And this is My Mother, She Killed Me, My Father, He Ate Me, 40 New Fairy Tales. And so this is also fairy tale retellings. If you're noticing a theme, I'm really into that. Um, I think Neil Gaiman, um, Shelley Jackson, Kelly Link, Joyce Carol Oates, a lot of big names in this. So I'm really excited to check this out. And then, of course, I'm currently doing a reread of The Bloody Chamber. And this opens with for Angela Carter. And that just like, that really hits. So I'm really excited to read this. I have been wanting it for a long time. Next, I have a collection of Norwegian folk tales that was bought for me by my girlfriend. Oh, also cute little scrap of our wrapping paper this year. But like, look at this little cat. She said what sold her on it was the illustrations um, because you know, there's so many folktale collections, but only so many of them have really cool illustrations like this. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So there's that. Next, um, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I have been trying to learn French all year and have definitely fallen off it in recent months, but I know enough to read. And um, Kate got me, uh, Le Petit Chat Timide, which is um, the shy little cat. So I, I, I also please ignore that horrible pronunciation. I am a Duolingo learner. Um, but look at this. Are you kidding? I think this is a little golden book or I think I think so. Right. But just the cutest little thing. And she got this for me to help me practice my reading and also just because it's like the cutest thing ever. So thank you. Got two more left. Um, Kate also got me this edition of Frankenstein that is just so cool. I've read Frankenstein many times. We all know what it's about, but this is just a really interesting edition. I think it is from, I can tell you, it's from 1965, which is super cool. Everyone needs a good edition of all of their top classics. So. And then last but not least, um, I have been anticipating this book really heavily and I am really excited about this. And my mom got it for me. It's Baba Yaga's Book of Witchcraft. And um, this is just from my understanding, um, a Slavic woman's recount of a lot of traditional practices and how to tie that in with the lore of Baba Yaga. Um, and what really drew me in here is that there is a whole chapter on the loom as magic and if you don't know i am a weaver so i was just so so excited to see that because i am always looking for connections like in my studies as a folklorist um one of my like interests is looking for connections between fiber arts and witchcraft and um it can be really hard to find like concrete connections. So I'm really, really excited to check this one out and see what I can learn from it. So that is everything that I got. I also have a few other like bookish leaning things that I wanted to show because I thought they are so funny. Um, I have been really into Peanuts, Charlie Brown this year, <laughs> the latter half of this year because of um, depression and watching cute little cartoons that I liked when I was a kid makes me happier. So I asked people this year, 
get me Charlie Brown things. Um, and people delivered. Um, Kate got me this coach bag. Um, <laughs> this Peanuts coach bag. I own a coach bag now. And it's fucking Charlie Brown Peanuts. It's so funny to me. I also have this little, little coin thing. Um, I was carrying this around the mall today when I went to Barnes and Noble and I just felt like a baddie. It's just so funny. Charlie Brown coach bag makes me ridiculously happy. So great little bookish find. Also, Kate got me another bag um, from Richard Scarry's What Do People Do All Day? Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I actually went to the same store that Kate bought this at like a week after she had bought it and I saw another one and I like took a picture and everything. I was like, just so you know, like I really want this for Christmas. And I like came back like 20 minutes later and I was like, here's a picture. Like I really want this. And she had already bought it for me a week before. So, so those are two of the cute little bookish things I got this year along with this wonderful book haul. I think only, let me count. Literally one of these books was bought new. Everything else was bought used, which is so cool. And a lot of them are really unique and some really weird picks in here. But like, I, if you can take anything from this video, I would kind of push you to, you know, buy used books for as gifts for people. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I love receiving used books because they just have more character. They have been loved. They have notes in them. Um, and you find like weird little niche things that you wouldn't find elsewhere. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. And if you want to comment down below, let me know like, what gifts did you get this year? What was your favorite book related gift? Um, I would love to know. And have you read any of these? I'd also love to hear your thoughts on that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for bearing with me during this latter half of the year when I'm really, I'm trying to put out new content, but oh my gosh, I've just been so busy. So things are gonna be a little late. And then of course I got this. So don't wanna film my biggest video of the year just yet. But thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you had a happy holiday and I will see you in the next video. Bye.